On November 8th, 2019, a video on YouTube would be uploaded. No players online trailer tape. Arcade graphics, like Donkey Kong with multiple screens. You have the arcade experience. Now you can bring the... Keep coming only from Atari. He's better than me. The trailer seemed to be for an old FPS game set in the 90s. Along with the trailer is a link in the description to the actual game. No players online. You find a dusty VHS tape. On the side is written Capture the Flag Project Footage 03 20 86. You decide to put it into the player. What exactly is this? Well, only one way to find out. And here we are. We are first presented with the VHS style look of what appears to be a list of servers that we can join. Some of them say they are offline, while others say they are online. However, none of the servers seem to have any players on them. Interestingly enough, it seems that the only game mode these servers host is Capture the Flag. So, I guess we'll be capturing some flags. And so, it begins. We find ourselves immersed in the realm of a captivating game known as No Players Online. Without delay, we are equipped with a potent firearm capable of firing projectiles, while our current score is prominently displayed at the top of the screen. Intriguingly, the game interface informs us on its ongoing search for fellow players conveniently positioned in the bottom left corner. Besides that, the game lives up to its name. You stand alone in this game, where the echo of your footsteps reverberates with each step, accompanied by the subtle whispers of wind and the encompassing stillness of the surroundings. The ambience is minimal, leaving little to perceive. It truly gives off the feeling that you are alone. Exploring the map, you come to find that the game is small, but the configuration of the map gives off a feeling of familiarity. The level design bears a striking resemblance to the landscapes encountered in early 3D shooters such as Quake or any other early FPS shooters. As for the gameplay, capture the flag by yourself.
there aren't any other players there to stop you from capturing their flag. It makes you wonder how you managed to even join an empty server in the first place. After traversing the map to the opposing team's spawn location, you can capture the enemy's flag. However, upon capturing it, the mood takes a sudden shift. The scenery takes a more gloomy feeling to it. After obtaining the flag, music can be heard in the distance. Locating where the music is coming from, it turns out it was a phonograph playing this old school music. You also come to the realization that this phonograph wasn't here before. Returning to my goal to deliver the flag, I... wait. I could have sworn I was the only one in this game. That was strange, but I went on to deliver the flag, gaining a successful point. But it seems like you need a total of 3 points to win. Traversing across the map again, I bump into a red glowing light covering the upcoming corridor. I'm not too sure what that was about, but I will continue on my way. Someone with a mysterious username has joined the game. I guess I'm not the only one in this game. Okay. There it is again, the presence of this mysterious user, whose identity remains shrouded in mystery. Though I can only speculate, it seems likely that this individual has joined our game. Although I don't know the exact details of this individual's involvement, I do know one thing, and that thing is that we need one more point to get a total of three. three, three, three. However, while immersed in the gameplay, a peculiar observation caught my attention. The bullets fired from our weapon exhibit a seemingly random behavior. In one instance, a volley of 5 bullets may be unleashed. Yet, upon reloading, the capacity dwindles to a mere 2 shots. Sometimes it's 3 bullets, and on occasion only 1 bullet is shot. 
This erratic pattern suggests either a random occurrence or perhaps hints at a larger, more intricate puzzle waiting to be deciphered. Continuing onward, I go on to collect the final flag and notice that the tree disappears for some reason. I'm not too sure why. Why? 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 move another step. Whatever you do, do not deliver that flag. How did you even get access to this game? Can you hear me? If you can read this, press Y to chat and say something. Wait, never mind. I don't think you have chat permission on the server. Just shoot twice if you can read this. you can read this. So, let me explain. If you deliver that last flag, the servers will shut down. I absolutely cannot let that happen. I've been working on this project for more than 11 years. I can't let you jeopardize all of my work. This may look like a simple FPS game to you, but this game has the power to raise the dead. At least, that's what it's supposed to do. It's still a work in progress, as you can probably tell. I'm making this so I can see my wife again. But she seems to be stuck in a sort of limbo. You probably already met her. She might come over a bit aggressive, but she's just scared and confused. I've been able to keep her relatively calm by playing her favorite music. If you deliver that last flag, her soul will be set free. But I know I can save her and bring her back. Please press escape and shut down the game. Please. Now from this point forward you have two choices. You can deliver the final captured flag and shut down the servers or you can press escape and leave the game. Me being optimistic, I wondered what would happen if I were to deliver the final flag. Looks like we've been kicked from the server. Connection to host. A lost. Guess all we can do now is reboot the game and see if anything has changed. Thank you. 
After restarting the game, it seems like all the servers are still down, and there are no other buttons to press to unravel what just happened. However, there's something we can do. On November 7th, 2019, the developer of No Players Online added a Linux build to the game, and a secret. Hint, a combination of keys that sound like Konami. Now, if you don't know what Konami code is, it was a secret code provided in games by Konami video games, that, and it's most commonly known as the Contra code, because in Contra, if you were to enter this code, you would be rewarded with 30 extra lives. However, if we were to apply this code to no players online, we are presented with something else. By pressing up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. We would be able to reset the game's status. So now we can venture back into this cryptic world and see what lies deeper within this game. After returning to the game, nothing of the game has changed. No new obstacles or puzzles, no new players, and no new set of rules. Simply capture the flag and score three points. However, you still have the ominous phonograph playing music in the background. I'm still not sure what this strange red glow is referring to, I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can shoot the phonograph to pause the creepy music. However, I choose not to. I get past these creepy and unsettling jump scares from John's wife and continue on my way. You may also notice that I found out that there is a sprint key in this game, and that's why I'm flying through this second playthrough. Oh, I forgot someone's behind me. After conversing with John for a bit, we are back to where we were previously. We can choose to score the final points, or leave the game. I now decided to not go the route of scoring a point, but instead leave the game. Leaving the game results in us returning to the server menu. Strange, however, what would happen if we were to join once more? Here we are, again. Exploring through the game again, nothing has changed. I soon return to my conversation with John, however, the conversation is different from previous conversations we've had previously. Why are you here again? Please, just leave us alone. So now the dev is in the game, we once again have the option to deliver the final flag or leave the game once more. However, after all this development, something has got to change about the game, right? After exploring the map to see if anything has changed, I stumble upon something odd. I don't remember that I being there.
kicked once again. Well, where and what now? There are no new servers to join, and if we reset the game, it will simply restart the cycle that we previously played. So, I guess all we have to go off of is this video. What is it? Well, after some analysis of the video, it turns out that the arrows or angles that the individual is drawing is actually indicating arrow keys. So, in the video, he does up, 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 down, down, arrow keys. And the last drawing at the end is actually supposed to be an enter key. Except it's an enter key that you can find on an old keyboard that you rarely see nowadays. So, we can make the assumption that this code is up, 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 down, down, enter key. However, where exactly do you put this code? Interestingly enough, it appears that one must type the code only after getting kicked from the server. And once after importing the code, a strange file appears on my desktop. Warning, enable tracking, re-establishing connection to server, underscore, underscore, deleting srh.ch, resetting progress, dump end, exception, dead end, 25467. This is strange. Now, upon all of this information that we just received, the number 25467 will be an important factor later. Returning to the website, there are new updates and devlogs throughout time. November 9th were a couple of bug fixes, but nothing important other than the I symbol we've been seeing recently. However, that is not the reason we are back on the website. You see, on November 11th, a new devlog would be posted to the website. Along with this devlog, a random file would be attached to it. 100% save file dot sav. What is this file? Since it's a sav file, there isn't too many options to open it with. I tried to open it with a notepad, but it didn't provide much assistance. However, after inspecting the, the file, it almost seems like the file is supposed to be a dot png file instead of a dot sav file. painting of a lamp post a date 11 15 19 november 15th 2019 a final devlog update on the website thank you for commentating and sharing videos about this little remake project I'm pleased to say I was able to get multiplayer working again. It uses some of the netcode of the old game, but it should still work with your modern BMOS terminal. Since the netcode isn't mine, I advise you giving the networking dev of the old game an email if you encounter any issues. I was able to retrieve it from the old Inuit site using the Wayback Machine. Below it is an email, johnmoolard at yahoo.com. I attempted to email this address today, but the address doesn't seem to be active anymore, which makes sense since this all occurred back in 2019. However, back in 2019, if you were to email this address, it would auto-reply with the following. 
Due to personal grievances, I am out of office from 3-31-1975 to 06-02-1975. Regards, John Mullard, Lead Networking Engineer. Along with it are two links attached to it. The first website did not result in anything, and even using the Wayback Machine, I wasn't able to find much. The next website is an interesting one though. John.Mullard, welcome to my personal website. I walk with the dog. Going further along the website, it appears that this is some type of game that you can download. Once again, there's only one way to find out. Well, this is different. The first thing I would like to point out is that there are the lampposts that we saw in the picture earlier. The art style of this game is far different than the one in No Players Online. It doesn't have the 90s feel to it, but instead it feels as if we've just stepped foot into a painting of sorts. However, it does look as if we are alone as well in this game, only accompanied by our dog that we can't see in the distance. We can only hear it panting and breathing. But besides the dog noises, the mood appears a bit grim, with the sky and forest being murky almost like some type of overcast waiting to happen. And the background music and sound of my footsteps certainly aren't helping either. I can't help but notice that the more we walk along, the more we can't see too far into the distance. We have no idea what awaits us. But the most important question is, what does this game have to do with no players online? What is this? sentimental, my dreams are blue dreams. Just won't come true dreams. Blue dreams, I find. Blue and sentimental, I can't forget you. won't let you out of my mind.
It rains all the time since you said goodbye. The skies are my eyes, and my heart's all cry. Blue and sentimental, if you don't want me. Why do you, me? And keep my feelings blue and sentimental. It rains all the time since you said goodbye. Well, the skies in my eyes, in my heart, all cry. Blue and sentimental, if you don't want me, Why do you, me, and keep me feeling blue and sentimental? Yes, sentimental. And it seemed to kick us out. I have so many questions. Strange. Well, where do we go from here? Well, it's actually quite simple. You see, the messages that were being flashed on the screen a moment ago in I are actually lyrics for a song called Blue and Sentimental. It was a song written by Count Basie in 1938. However, if you guys may have remembered, there were a couple of times when a word was obscured from the lyrics. Well, according to the lyrics of the song, that word is haunt. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what do we do with this word, haunt? Well, it turns out that users online found out that if you start with a game of no players online, and simply typed out the word haunt in the server menu, something unusual would happen. What is this? Sound test 1389 sounds loaded on disk. Copyright Anuit Games Ltd. Enter memory address to test sound file. Okay, well, what exactly is the memory address for this sound file? Well, you may remember how I mentioned that the code found in the log file will come in handy later. Now, aside the terrifying screech, there is a text at the bottom of the screen that reads, removed mesh number 345 collision. Well, 
looks like we'll have to start up another playthrough. I believe this is our third or fourth time starting up a new playthrough. I honestly can't remember. However, we're not here to complete it for the fourth time. I don't remember having the ability to get this close to the edge. What if... I were to... We are thrown into a room called the dungeon. Here we are accompanied by a far different type of atmosphere. The background music is far more eerie and unsettling than the surface level's background music. Down in the dungeon, we are brought various different objects. For starters, there is a computer that asks for a passcode. To confirm removal of file srm.cs, please enter passcode. I can't help but explain how unsettling this room feels. A room isolated from the actual game, where you can only access after accessing an obscure code that hardly any would bother to find. It's almost as if we're never meant to be here. Around the dungeon walls are all sorts of crypts and peculiar messages. I wonder what this all can mean. What purpose does this room serve? Well, I guess the bigger question is, what is the passcode for the computer? On November 16th, 2019, something interesting was discovered. Some of you may or may not remember, however, I mentioned that the random occurrence of bullets shot from the weapon were odd and perhaps it could lead to a puzzle waiting to be deciphered. Well, it turns out that players discovered that bullets shot from the gun are not random, but rather they were meant to be shot in that order. The reload ammo count follows a certain pattern that goes 3, 2, 4, 6, 8, 4, 1, 7, 5, Four, nine. Players found that the number pattern provided on the screen is not random, but rather it's a phone number with a Belgian area code. When you add a plus sign in front of the numbers and call it, this is what can be heard. Perplexing, but fascinating. However, this isn't the only clue that was discovered by users online. A Linux user discovered that one of the messages on the wall in the dungeon is actually a hidden message written in braille. After decrypting the message, the user found the image read Bandcamp. After a bit more digging from other users, they found that Bandcamp is referring to a website. That website is called Bandcam.com. JohnMullard.Bandcamp.com The website provided two different albums, both containing music inside. The first album is actually all the official music soundtrack used in the game No Players Online and even the i.exe game. It all sounds very casual.
But why is the last one's name so cryptic and strange? What did I just hear? Moving on to the second one, which is even more odd. He kept writing numbers and letters alternately. I think he's gone mad. Number. He's crude. Calls me cowardly. Letter. I'm scared. Number. He says he hears xylophones from the other room. Letter. Plus. Today he said. Number. X marks the spot. Letter. Something has gone wrong. Galen Village, tranquil, quiet. This is very strange, but I'm almost positive we've heard this audio before. Well, it turns out that it's the same dial tone audio from the reload ammo count phone number call. From the sound of the dial tone audio, it almost sounds like some type of code, perhaps Morse code? Listening to the dial tone audio, it was discovered that it actually was Morse code. Analyzing the audio, it turns out that there are some hidden quotes sprinkled within it. Users online looked over it several times until eventually it was solved. By looking at the audio, users found that if you take the last letter from each of the longest words per sentence and subtracted them from the keyword, which is dog, it results in a code. 26 minus 7, 26 minus 12, and 26 minus 5 results in 191421. Replacement soul required.
Did we do it? Is this really the final ending to the game? As much as I want to say yes, it's not my friends. There's still one last thing we must do. Remember these audios? Yeah, they all lead to a bigger picture. The 38N audio file is actually an Imberg link to an image. The image presents what appears to be a couple of trees in a secluded forest. Not much else to say about it besides the strange fake mushroom on the left side of the photo. But it's not until the developer of the game would give a clue to players to solve this whole mystery. In 2019, during all this discovery, there was a Discord server called Some Players Online, who were users dedicated to solving all these codes and mysteries in the first place. Among all this development, a developer of the game would give out a hint to players that would help piece all the puzzles together. It read, Park 9F35, with a plus sign sprinkled in within the hidden clue. After this clue, players went back to the audio called underscore underscore in the album and begin to solve the final hidden message. The transcript of the audio presents strange letter and number references between the text. He kept writing numbers and letters alternately. I think he's gone mad. Number. He's crude. Calls me cowardly. Letter. I'm scared. Number. He says he hears xylophones from the other room. Letter. Plus. Today he said. Number. X marks the spot. Letter. Players assume that these were the final alphanumeric codes that were needed to solve the hidden message. And they would be right. In the transcript of the audio, it was solved using the following. In the quote, I think he's gone mad, we are looking for a number. That number would be five, since there are five words in that quote. He's crude calls me cowardly. We are looking for a letter, cowardly being the longest word, and starting with the letter C, it would be C. I'm scared. We are looking for a number. That number would be two, since there are two words in the quote. He says he hears xylophones from the other room. We are looking for a letter, xylophones being the longest word, and starting with the letter X, it's going to be X. Plus today he said, We are looking for a number, that number would be four, since there are four words in the quote. And finally, for the last quote, X marks the spot. It's pretty obvious that the last letter is X. This code discovered is actually an area code. Using Google Maps and typing out the full code actually reveals something. It takes you to a spot in a national forest in Belgium. Ludwigenbos. Well, X marks the spot, right? One of the users from the Discord server ventured outside to the location. What they found was what many would say is closure. They found a sort of capsule in a wrapper. On the actual capsule itself was the symbol of the eye reference several times in this whole mystery. Inside the actual capsule was a letter. Why do you seek me? and keep me feeling blue and sentimental. Yes, sentimental. Below the quote are a whole lot of cryptic numbers. After being decrypted, the hidden message read, Thanks for hunting. And that would be the official ending to the game. What a journey it has been. Who could have anticipated that a small indie game could be filled with such intricate details and hidden secrets? Despite its brevity, this game possesses a unique charm that 
doesn't leave you wanting more. In fact, a concise nature seems perfectly suited to its purpose. From the outset, the game aimed to initiate an alternate reality game, ARG, encouraging players to unravel puzzles and uncover an official ending. It's the enigmatic allure of such mysteries that truly captivates me. A modest indie game has managed to lead countless individuals down a mesmerizing rabbit hole, awaiting exploration at every turn. The birth of an entire Discord server dedicated to solving and spreading awareness of a ARG mystery is a testament to its impact. The game easily channels the essence of early 90s first-person shooters, and its persuasive atmosphere of uneasiness is masterfully conveyed. Reflecting on the experience, I can't help but wish I had been present during the initial discovery phase back in 2019. In an interview with Adam Pipe by Indie Ranger, the developer of No Players Online, he expressed pleasant surprise at the overwhelming support the ARG received. If he had foreseen the game's tremendous reach, he admits he might have crafted the story differently. Interestingly enough, Pipe revealed that the ARG aspect was mostly unintentional. The whole ARG aspect of the game was mostly on accident. We put a little secret in there if you replayed the game after the ending, and people started reading way too much into it. Eventually, we spent the week after developing the whole ARG onto the game, so all of it was fairly unplanned. Who would have known a small secret for those who replayed the game after its conclusion sparked an unexpected wave of speculation and interpretation? Pipe further shared his inspiration for designing a level that executed the chilling ambience. No Players Online is unique. It's a rarity to witness games seamlessly incorporate ARG elements into their gameplay, but Adam's execution was nothing short of exceptional. One could argue that even though the game was intended to have no players online, it undeniably brought together a community of players online.